uh, I have in the, in the station with me tonight three gentlemen from the Connecticut Gilbert and Sullivan Society. Um, and they, they put on a show every year of one of Gilbert and Sullivan's operas. It's right here on the shoreline. I was completely unaware of their existence, and I feel bad for that. Um, so I thought maybe, maybe there's other folks out there who are uh, unaware. Uh, so you won't be after this. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting now with uh, John Dreslin, uh, musical director, Mike Reynolds, associate director, and uh, Dave Shankup, who uh, will play Lord Chancellor in this year's uh, production, which we'll get to in just a moment. Um, but the big picture thing, Gilbert and Sullivan, didn't know a lot about them. Um, would one of you folks maybe uh, give us a little history, a little idea of their importance? Well, let's start out by saying that these are the two gentlemen who pretty much single-handedly invented the whole genre of musical theater. That would be big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they lived uh, in the um, late 1800s and were active from about the 1870s into the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, they did 14 collaborations, uh, one of which has been lost, was lost in a fire, uh, but the other 13 are played regularly by theater groups uh, uh, throughout the English-speaking world and some a little bit beyond that as well. It's, it's said that the sun never sets on a Gilbert and Sullivan production because they're going on worldwide and all around. They've mm. had them in Japan, they've had them in, in Russia, and all over the world. Recently a production of Pirates on Broadway. Yes. Yeah, yeah I saw Pirates of Penzance, mm -hmm. one yes. of theirs, oh, the Mikado. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. yep, um, Mikado. Names which rang a bell with me. Yeah. I, I feel bad I didn't know who had written them. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, typically comedies, lighthearted kind of... With uh, one yes. exception, yes. yes. Okay. With one exception, mm -hmm. they're all comedies. They're all very, very funny. Well, yeah. hopefully I can catch this one. <laughs> well, I hope so. Yeah, we um, hope you'll be there. <laughs> now, I saw on your website, which, um, that you folks have been since 1980, about then, about yeah, we were just discussing that. this, 1980, <laughs> hey, 82, right. somewhere, somewhere in the beginning of the 80s. I joined in um, 1984, so I know they've been around since then. Could you maybe tell us a little bit about the troupe in general, where you're located, where sure. your shows go out of? Um, well, the, the, the group's sort of headquartered in the Middletown area. Uh, for many years, we performed at the Middletown High School, which is now the Middletown Junior High School. Um, we then moved to the new Middletown High School for a few years, and now uh, we're performing in Deep River at the high school there. Uh, we yeah, rehearse, Valley Regional. Valley yeah. Regional? Yeah. We rehearse in Middletown, and we draw people from all over the state, and even some from out of state. Now, you mentioned people come to sing with you, so is the, is the troupe fluid? Is there, uh, is there yearly auditions? Do yes. You... We do uh, one production a year, one production a year in the fall. And uh, we audition in June. Uh, we announce it all over the state. We're one of, I would say, six or seven opera companies in Connecticut. And that's it. To do full stage productions with orchestra and everything. So we uh, get also all live music. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yes, yeah. live and full, like full orchestra. Full yeah, orchestra. Yeah. Yeah. We'll ha we'll have a uh, twenty-one piece. Uh, orchestra playing with us uh, using the original Sullivan orchestrations. Uh, there are reduced scores available, but we like to stick big. with the, mm -hmm. well, we like to stick with the original, which right. are, which in my opinion, are far the best. Right. So let's get to the, uh, the important pits now. Yes. This okay. year's production. All right. So what, what do we got? Well, oh. we have something called Iolanthe. Um, it's going to occur at Valley Regional uh, High School in Deep River on uh, uh, Saturday, October 3rd, a matinee at 2 o'clock and an evening at 7.30. And then also the next day, Sunday, October 4th, uh, with a matinee at, a matinee at 2 o'clock. And um, why don't you tell them some more about the show? Okay. Well, it's got a lot of fairies in it. They're uh, English fairies who... Uh, fall in love with the House of Lords. Oh. The entire House of Lords, the whole house of the upper house of the English Parliament, they all come and 
Not too many in. people in love with politicians these days. <laughs> well, it's sometimes you just have to be a fairy. What can I tell you? <laughs> there are a lot of there are a lot of digs about politics in this in this one. Uh, right, uh, and uh, both uh, both both sides, well, liberal and conservative. Gilbert is yeah. uh, very even-handed in his uh, political satire. Mm. The uh, main character in the uh, uh, in the opera uh, is a fellow by name of Strephon, who uh, his mother was a fairy and whose father was the Lord Chancellor mm -hmm. of England. Which 25 years ago. Yeah. And uh, he, he was a product of this union, and uh, as a result, he is half fairy and he's half mortal. He's uh, fairy in the upper half, down to the waist, and he's mortal from the waist down, which uh, causes see. all sorts of problems in his life. Now, how about tickets for this event? Is, there, is it a walk-up? Thing? Should people have them in advance? You can get tickets at the door, but you have a discount if you order in advance. I believe it's a $5 discount. About so it. they can be purchased yeah. by phone or by internet. Yeah. Excellent. Seats are general admission. Yeah. So the recommendation is get there early. Get there a little bit early so you can, you know, sit in the yeah, prime just, location. Just travel on over to our website, you know, www.ctgandus.org. That's us. Excellent. And you can buy them through there. Yep. Yeah. All right, now I was promised that there would be a song involved in this. There will be. Love unrequited robs me of my rest. Love, hopeless love, my ardent soul encumbers love nightmare like lies heavy on me chest and weaves itself into my midnight slumbers Lying awake with a dismal headache and repose is tabooed by anxiety. I conceive you may use any language you choose to indulge in without impropriety. For your brain is on fire and the bedclothes conspired of usual slumber to plunder you. First your counterpane goes and uncovers your toes, then the she slips the muley from under you. The blanketing tickles you feel like mixed pickles, so terribly sharp is a pricking. And you're hot and you're cross and you tumble and toss till there's nothing twist you and the ticking. And the bedclothes will creep to the ground in a heap and you pick them all up in a tangle. Next your pillow resigns, it politely declines to remain at its usual angle. Will you get some repose in the form of a dose without eyeballs and head ever aching? But your slumbering teeth with such horrible dreams, you'd very much better be waking. For your dream you are crossing the channel and tossing about in a steamer from Haddage, which is something between a large bathing machine and a very small second class carriage. And you're giving a treat, penny ice and cold meat, to a party of friends and relations. They're a ravenous horde, and they all came on board at Stone Square and South Kensington stations. And bound on your journey, you find your attorney who started that morning from Devon. He's a bit undersized, and you don't feel surprised when he tells you he's only 11. Now you're driving like mad with a singular lad. By the by, the ship's now a four-wheeler. And you're playing around games, and he calls you bad names when you tell him the ties pay the dealer. Well, this you can't stand, so you throw up your hands, and you find you're as cold as an icicle. In your shirt and your socks, the black silk with milk box crossing Salisbury Plain on a bicycle. And he and the crew are on bicycle which too, which they somehow or other invested in. And he's telling the Tars or the Park de Culars of a company he's interested in. It's a scheme of devices to get at low prices, or goes and brought mixtures to cables, which tickles the sailors by treating retailers as though they were all vegetables. You get a good space when you plot a small tradesman first take off his boots with a boot tree, and his legs will take root, and his fingers will shoot, and they'll blossom and bud like a fruit tree. From the green grocery tree, you get grapes and pea, cauliflower, pineapple, and cranberries. While the pastry cook plant, cherry brandies will grant apple bluffs and three corners and bambadies. The shares at a penny and ever so many are taken by Rothschild and Bering. And just as a few are allotted to you, you awake with a shot of despairing. You're a regular wreck with a crick in your neck, and no wonder you snore for your head's on the floor, and you've needles and pins from your soles to your shins. Your flesh is a creep, and your left leg's asleep. There's a cramp in your toes and a fly on your nose, some fluff in your lung and a feverish tongue, and a thirst is intense, and a general sense that you haven't been sleeping in two moments. But the darkness has passed. It's daylight at last. 
The night has been long, ditto, ditto my song. And thank goodness they're both of them over.